when you're 90. <laughs> well, now let me tell you about my little girl, my little Leah Al. She was born determined. <laughs> Anybody disagree with that? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. She never ever the in her Doesn't whole mean. life did anything that was not ethical. This is the most ethical woman I know. Um, sadly, she's not able to practice law. And it's their loss because she is so special in terms of what is right and what is wrong. And if you ever have anything in your heart that you need to talk, burn her because she'll listen. She listens. She's not somebody who lets go in one ear and out the other. She'll like listen and she'll tell you. <laughs> That's very important. Now, you think that I got to the age of 80 and I've got nothing to tell you. Let me tell you. Here's my advice. When you get married, make sure you marry into a family that you really like. You can get rid of the husband, but keep the family. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Why, why are you looking there? Well, I'm actually looking at Ruth so that you can <laughs> keep that in mind. Your family. <laughs> this is it. You're stuck with us. Do <laughs> you agree? Yes, yeah, she's definitely stuck with us, especially for a little bit that. How many years So that's, that's very really good advice. And then that's the other reason why I got together with Jack. Now, I can't talk about Jack without saying something very special about Avi. Um, Avi has been more than just a granddaughter to me. She's been a part of my heart. And if not for her at four, I don't think that yeah, done, okay. Eliana and Warren and Yoni on the way <laughs> would have um, made the connection that we made. But the connection was made with Avi and I'm very, very lucky because Jack left me, but I got the family. <laughs> and I'm tired lucky because I love them and they connect with me. And how lucky can you be? We also love you. <laughs> Thank you. And Jack, of course, was wonderful to my family. You should also marry somebody who can teach you something. <laughs> Which brings us to Michael Sharp. <laughs> I mean, the first thing I saw on the cape was the Ace King Queen Jack and no tin. Without a royal flush, that cape would have gone back. <laughs> <laughs> but Yvonne, Michael did bring you to Worcester to meet the Sharpens. He what? He brought you to Worcester, right? Yeah, I think that was the He probably got lost as usual. <laughs> <laughs> However, Michael did teach me a lot of stuff. He taught me how to love Hazonis, which I still love. He had a love and an understanding of the history of Judaism, which was phenomenal. So I'm happy he had that because he could pass it on to Jonathan and Ari and Mandy. He did a lot of passing on very reluctantly because <laughs> came to court. He used to take them to the shop in Sandalwood and buy them sweets because he used to get there too late for them to eat the supper. But it's okay, they got the sweets, <laughs> which was okay. Um, you know, I mean, here, here was a, a very unusual member of the family, <laughs> shall we say. Um, but the good thing was that he and Jack got along. And he, believe it or not, he was terrified of Jack, which was marvelous for me. Because anything that I wanted Michael to do, I told Jack to tell Michael. No problem. It was fixed and it was done. And of course, Jonathan. You also owe a lot to Jack. When you were living in Israel, he guided you through that course, that correspondence course. He was diligent. The thing came, he read it, he mailed it. I said to him, is this necessary? He says, 
Jonathan shouldn't think he could sit in Israel and do nothing. <laughs> so, Jack was a good part about that. Do you remember him? Yes, I remember him. Now have a look at Warren. Does he look anything like 